This is the Misk Hall A, and today we're gonna go and we're gonna look at all the stats, we're gonna look at the ship from the outside, from the inside, go through all the nooks and credits. This video is brought to you by Rich Wallet. Rich is redefining the wallet with their compact wallets made from premium materials. Their wallets are easily half the size of traditional wallets, but despite that, they can still hold up to a 12 card and has a money clip on the side. Want to carry coins or key? No problems. Rich got you covered with their optional cavity tray. All their wallets also come with RFID blocking to prevent digital theft. So check out Rich Wallet on rich.com forward slash D2A and use offer code D2A to get 10% off. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Star Citizen. So let's take a look at the Hall A and let's start by taking a look at the stats before we go and, uh, and take a look at the ship itself. The MISC Hall A, if you look at the price for this ship, it comes in at 80 US dollars if you want to buy it in the store, plus VAT, that depends on where you are in the world, but it's 80 plus, uh, plus VAT. It's not for sale in game yet. We're expecting it to be for sale in the 318 patch. So we don't know the in-game price, but a good guess is it's probably gonna be anywhere between one to one and a half million alpha UEC when it becomes available. So I just put a million and a half here to be sure, but we will see when it actually becomes available in game, how much it's going to cost. In terms of claim time, this thing has an amazing 42 second claim time. It is super fast and if you want to expedite it the fee is only 350 alpha uec when you expedite it, the reclaim time goes down to instant so zero seconds that means no matter where this thing is you can claim this you can claim this very very quickly if you need to, uh, to do a little bit of of light cargo hauling this is designated as a medium freight ship but it can do a little bit more than that as you will see in a second so let's take a look at its combat capabilities Probably not the main thing you're going to be buying this ship for, but I thought I would mention it anyway. Weapon-wise, it comes with a single um, nose-mounted turret. With it's, it's listed as a size 5 turret, but it comes by default with two size 1 guns. And it is says that it comes from a, uh, from a Star Runner, the turret. It says it's a Star Runner turret. So that would indicate that it can fit up to two size 3s, which is why I put the question mark there. That might be a mistake. It seems rather large to have a size 5 turret on a ship this size. But nevertheless, that's what it's listed as. So that's what I put here. So potentially you could fit up to size 3s. I, I, I don't know. The, the, the turret seems a little dubious to me. But that's at least the stats as they are in game right now. It does not come with any missiles, so you won't have any of those. Shield wise, wise it comes with two size 1 shields, which is okay for its size um it's uh, it's it's not amazing it's not gonna take on a lot of dog fighting or anything like that but it has some uh, some decent shields um for a transport ship in terms of speed it has 108 meters a second combat speed with a running speed of a thousand meters a second so it again not the fastest at least not in sublight let's go and take a look at his trading and holding capabilities and this is where things get really interesting, and this is probably the reason why people are buying this ship. Cargo-wise, it comes with 64 SCU of cargo, which is pretty good. Again, medium-sized trade ship, 64 SCU, absolutely, I'll take it. Now, quantum fuel-wise, it comes with a whopping 10,000 units of quantum fuel. Like, what? <laughs> That's insane how much fuel this thing carries with the standard quantum drive the standard goliath quantum drive it has a total range between refuels of 1639 million kilometers remember the like the furthest distance you can go in stanton is that like 57 million from crusader to microtech this thing could go crusader and microtech like 15 times or something stupid this thing will just keep flying and flying and flying it has so much damn fuel on board it's just ridiculous it really does lend itself really well as a a deep space transport ship where you're really gonna go far obviously we don't have a lot of that in star citizen just yet but it is expecting that when we get into a system like pyro that something like this is going to be a lot more important than it is today but as the ship stands today what you could easily do and what i would actually recommend you do if you go out and get yourself the ship 
either in the store or in game when it becomes available, is you go and fit a VK00 Quantum Drive. Because even with that drive, which is a really fast Quantum Drive and you could go around the system in no time, but even with that drive, you can still travel 463 million kilometers between refuels. Again, that is what eight, nah, eight, yeah, ish, eight times, something like that, something like eight times Crusader Microtech. You could just go so four times there and back that you could do between refuels. So, so this ship could lend itself really, really well as a. Uh, as a get around ship, you know, when you need to go around the uh, get around the system, you just have to transport some uh, some uh, some modules or, or stuff from from planet on up and move your like the whole like a logistic ship just to move all your stuff around the system to get them to where you want to be. If you have to go and buy some modules at a base, take your whole A, go out, buy the stuff, fly it back. It has the cargo capacity, it has the range, and with a VK00 drive, it definitely has the speed, so you can just zip around the system. But let's go and take a tour of the ship. And here we have it on the landing pad with uh, with Hurst there in the background. And there's no doubt about it when you see the cockpit up here in the front that this is a MISC ship. You can see that like letter box cockpit. But we actually get some decent we actually get some decent view out here from uh, from below. So we'll see how that translate when we get inside. Reverse thrusters here on the side, hover thrusters underneath, maneuvering thrusters here, and here we have that turret that we uh, that we talked about. Opposite side here, there is an opening here that looks like a door, but that's just for symmetry reasons. There is only entrance from uh, from the opposite side of the ship. Going down the length of the ship, it kind of resembles this, like I don't know, um, the Aurora a little bit with those wings. And then you have this weird section where it kind of looks like the ship will break in half, but we'll see in a second why that looks like this. You have the engines back here. Entrance is underneath here. Where we can open up. The door slides to the side and we have that signature MISC ladder just like we have on the, on the ships like the Prospector. There we go. Now with a bit of power on inside the ship. Here we have the door where we came in, and just opposite that we had have a uh, suit locker which we can open like so. So here, there's even a little button in here. Emergency release. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> so if you get stuck inside the suit locker, there's a button on the inside. Ah, oh, that's clever. So you can't use that as a prison cell. I like that. But that's for storing a space suit. Again, it makes sense right here next to uh, to the airlock. Very tiny airlock on these ships as you can see here but it is there going forward into the ship we have access to um, components which is located here and similarly on the other side so uh, all your internal components are stored with easy access opening this door leads us into for the size of the ship actually a very spacious cockpit we can see those windows down here not really providing any kind of view when we are in the cockpit seat because of this wraparound control panel. Turn us around like so. We have this weird light, <clears throat> this weird light that's on the um, on the window there that comes from the um, I think it's from my suit, some kind of light on my suit that does it. I'm not really sure, but uh, now that we are here in the cockpit, it's a good chance to just go out and take a look at. Uh, at the ship from the outside with a bit of, little, little bit of daylight. See the landing gear go up. The so closes up and it becomes actually a very sleek looking boat. I really like that. And, and, and a spoiler, which is always nice, I guess. One of the things that you can see here is that split away section. Now, if we jump back in, you have this button here called Extend Cargo Spline. Clicking that, you will see how the ship, the rear end of the ship extends. And these cargo racks or cargo mounting plates or whatever you want to call these unfold like so. And it is, it is in this situation here where the ship is in its cargo carrying mode. So now cargo can be strapped onto these plates here. Obviously since you're most going to be flying this in, in space. You can just strap it on there to the side and it should be fine. 
can fold the whole thing back together. And we can see how those cargo racks can slide up along the side. Especially if we turn this towards the sun. You can now see how those cargo racks are stored there along the side of, uh, of the engines. Okay, let's get our RC and let's finish the rest of the ship interiors. As you can see, it's not the biggest ship ever, but it uh, it does have some decent amount of, uh, of internal space. If you open this door, moving backwards into the ship, we get into a, again, a very sizable living area for the ship. I mean, this feels a lot more spacious than what you would see in something like a Prospector or anything else um, of a similar size. We have some storage here, small like kitchen with a with a fridge. Very basic, nothing too uh, too fancy. And this part will be a little bit. You have a weapon rack in here, so like the suit is on the other side of this this door, and the weapon is in here. That's a little weird, maybe. I don't know if that kind of. I don't know if you want to lock this door so people can't get access to the weapons, but I don't know. At least the weapon rack is here, maybe. In, as you're sleeping, then you can't easy access. I don't know, but at least very nice, compact but very nice sleeping quarters here. Moving further back, we get also a, again for the size of the ship, they've dedicated a very decent amount of space for a um, um, for a bathroom, a proper bathroom, not just one of those back end things that we get in some of the other ships. It really shows that the ship here is intended to be living in as a long-range holding ship, something where you're actually going to be living in for a significant amount of time. Um, whereas something like a, a mining ship where you probably won't stay out for that long, uh, this is this is like a, a, it's a truck, right? You, you, you could be living in this for days, so they have allocated more space for living quarters as well as decent accommodations. But that is the missed call A. What do you think about it? Do you agree with my uh, with my views that this could be a really good long range getting around the system kind of ship, even if you're not using it for cargo? Or maybe it's not uh, to your liking? Put it in the comment section down below. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, I'll see you guys in space.